Welcome to Amuna is our future. It's Amuna is our future. Yes, we have a future every day. Such a gift. We're back to basics. That's today's class. We're going back to basics, everyone. So uh, all of us need to like get a little bit like oh, aired out after such a beautiful Yom Tov. And we have to thank Hashem for two special days this year in Eretz as well as well. We had Yom Tov Shavuot and we had Shabbos so for our friends out there. It was two days. Peace, man. And we're going to try not only thank Hashem for all those special moments we had, but we're now going to go through the tough moments that unfortunately come out of Yom Tov and there's just this fire going on in the world. And remember that the ultimate troops, what are the truths? Not the troops, the truths. The truths. The MS, the real clarity of vision of what life's about that we got from Kabbalah Satoya, from Matan Toya, from receiving this inspiration, this new light of renewal in our learning and our relationship with God. <clears throat> this we got. We're going to bring it how we can bring it into our life and go through those tough moments. Once again, the Wi Fi is Nishdo, it's not here. So the internet's going to be a little bit labidic, but you know what, you guys, we get the Breast Love podcast, Breast of Israel, Moon is Our Future podcast coming out, so you can tune into the audio, it's always easy for me, on, a, on like one of these Apple things, or you know, one, whatever way you listen to your podcasts, or you can listen to it on Spotify, thank God everything goes through now to Spotify, put up a new album on Spotify, personally, it's uh, about being together, it was written and performed 2002, and you guys can find it under Ellie Goldsmith, Midnight Rabbi, or Together. And also Elion. It's gone live on Spotify. My good friend Eliezer Kosoy, K-O-S-O-Y. And it's no audio. Ooh, this is no audio. I don't believe it. You can hear me. You just got to listen carefully. Okay, so what we're saying is today is not only do we have the audio platform, and not only do we have, thank God, the edited YouTube video, which, thank God, came out perfect timing for Shavuos, and there wasn't enough views on it. I want you guys to go back and listen to the previous, or watch, even better, on YouTube, like, share, get into that energy of what Shavuos is about, so that now we've tapped into that energy, and it's an energy which is applicable the whole year round, because what makes the Jewish people what we are is that we had that revelation on Harsinai. Not only are we kind people, hopefully, and we're merciful people, and we're people that are able to experience true shame when something doesn't work out the way we want, but we're also able to tune in to that experience on a daily level, literally on a daily level, to Kabbalah Satori, to, to what happened on Shavuos. Those truths, those values, that moral guidance the, the world itself is crying for nowadays like it's it's crazy just watch online the discussions like what happened to basic moral values that my mum she wasn't so religious a lady and she isn't so religious lady yet but she knows values like she grew up in a world where there was I don't know self-respect and understanding of how people should behave towards each other and you know obviously there's respect to other people's properties and like basic basic stuff you know like that when we receive a Torah and you go into the Torah and you look at the details thousands and thousands of halachas and and guiding teachings of truth like you could literally like envelop yourself in the yam the sea of Torah and you see what it is that for sure will give you the guiding light how to be a good person in the world I mean we're not saying everyone who has the Torah is a good person you know we have an evil inclination that can take those teachings and that power it gives you and God forbid use it for wrong things like anything that's energized but the ultimate truth is that once you've connected yourself to Torah and this itself it says in Rabbi Nachman Seifers Chus Aleinu Rabbi Nachman Ben Fager Rabbi Nachman Ben Simcha Chus Yagan Aleinu his merit should protect us that he writes in his Sefer Meshivas Nofit a beautiful savor, restoring the soul. It's a savor which a lot of my friends and uh, personally I spent many early mornings back in the day when I was a bit more, you know, easy to just like immerse myself in Torah. 
I remember learning there and it gave me encouragement for some of our friends. Good morning. Yes, people, amen. People are giving blessings of simcha and joy. That there was this power for, of Torah that you, once you've connected into Torah, you guys are listening. We're listening to the class. Hopefully I didn't knock the mic. You guys are listening and learning Torah. Hopefully you're going to open up a book and read the Torah. You can open up the Garden of Muna series, which reminds me we have to thank Rav Shalom Arish for hosting us in this beautiful studio on Yushalayim or Kodesh on this beautiful day after Shavuos when you made Tashlumim, it's Pasha's and we had a very inspirational time. So once you've tapped into that Torah, once you've even just read a little bit, even a, learned an, a letter, it says in Perk Alvis, one letter that David and Melech was taught, that that one letter gives a power to call that person that taught you that one letter a, a Rebbe, a master. So there's a certain power of learning, says Rabbi Nachman, that gives you an, a connection to eternity that you are now never ever going to be distracted or pulled away from. Somehow or another, that Torah that was planted in you is going to now grow and give energy to your good inclination, your, your soul level that we spoke about last week, this unified soul that we're part of. It's going to give that energize and that power and that motivation and that encouragement that no matter what, no matter how wild the world's going and how crazy the coronavirus has caused the Shem Shemayin of the challenge there to create this whole like economic seemingly hard time. You know, right now, personally, you don't know what's going to be next few months. The booking business has gone a bit, Whoa! and like, you know, like the musicians out there having a hard time and the performers, the entertainment industry, my family are in and all the other industries and the hotel business and the airlines and the tourist industry and go on and on and on but what gives you that foundation of connection like we said a munna but also that planting that seed of Torah inside you gives you the power to energize yourself no matter what no matter what that you're always going to find your way back and that's always been the blessing that if you've ever like wondered like hey what's going to be with that guy you know out there who's you know not so religious looking like we said like obviously the external stuff is not where it's at but just say he used to have a beard and now he doesn't and he used to have payouts and then he doesn't and then you know but personally I do have payers if you would like to see one day they're underneath I <laughs> just don't bring them out. But like, say, he used to this and he used to walk around with the Torah and he used to speak about rabbis all the time and, or, and, and be very inspired of Judaism. And then now he's not. And he was a famous guy and he's not. We don't have to say names. But the point is that you start to think, you know, what's going to be with that guy? Yeah, remember, I got my sanitizer just in case you're worried. So what's going to be with that guy? So the answer obviously is that the Torah inside that he learned once, even one time. I mean, he actually learned a lot of Torah, the person I'm thinking of. But there are many people, and I actually pray for that soul all the time. I sound in my breath. He, that person, there should be a merit for him, that the Torah that he learned will elevate him and elevate everything he's doing because that's an eternal connection. Once you've learned something spiritual from God's mind, you're internally attached to God. So the answer is, well, everybody can learn now. It's online. You just listen to a Nissan Black song on Spotify and you already learned some Torah. Or you listen to, uh, you know, a Shlomo Kalibach song and a Kalibach show, whatever it is, you're going to hear like, you know, any kind of saying from Rabbi Nachman or all our kind of Amuna posts. Yeah, that's what's happening. You're attaching yourself to Torah. So you say, but what about all the thousands of other things that people do and listen to and all the stuff that might be god forbid like happy courses kafira like things that are against belief in god like you know thank god there are people out there who believe in god generally like just as like a just an inner truth they believe in a creative universal force that's running everything or through the whole recovery world there's a certain recognition they need a higher power to to and we all do it <laughs> not, not just saying that word i need it also the higher power to help us overcome our addictions and our follies so you know there's a certain awareness a reality you know with business now nobody's saying you know with my mighty hand like trump was saying before at one point well, i'm not getting political i'm just saying he did say these words publicly that you know, he says a lot of things but he said that, that <laughs> he the idea that you know we have we have a power like to 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 the american economy and bottom line what happened uh, <laughs> you know we see that it's been switched around not saying you know that i'm saying which way to go like but the point when you get overly confident no matter who you are there's always going to be that now stumble because the, uh, god himself wants to keep us on an even kill wants to remind us who's the boss and he will remind us and he's reminding the world very clearly right now but it we want it to happen in a positive way. We want it to happen with love. And that's why, once again, by focusing in into the Torah aspect, there's only love. 
With Torah, there's only love and connection. There is an aspect of yura, of fear, and we spoke about that last week and the week before. When you're praying, you're doing it with love and fear, and you're going up, and, and fear really represents awareness and awe of, of the power of the Creator and the awesomeness of creation. Like I myself, I look at you know some of these YouTube videos of like Niflos or these or YouTube travelers right now. They're not so much traveling, but the ones when they were, and you see these beautiful places like Antarctica or you know these beautiful blue lagoons around Greece and all these islands, the Philippine Islands, all these unbelievable places, even there it's as well, you know, even in the Holy Land itself is a beautiful, beautiful land. It's probably the one when, when it's going to be in its full blooming, it's the most beautiful land in the world if, if you're able to just look. I mean, just the, right now there's a video playing on foreign industry, uh, for whatever it's called, for ministry of Israel playing right now on, on Facebook, and it's a very beautiful video when you see Eretz Israel, how beautiful this land is. It's the land of Chalav Devash, of milk and honey, and it has a bountiful that we haven't even seen the fullness of it yet but even with in our exile state we're still seeing how it's all coming forth as the as the people return and build and and the love for for the land the love for, for Hashem and the love for Torah and the love for the Jewish people and the world it grows from from that amuna is causing a sprout forth in the land, in the land, in the, in the high-tech world even. And the high-tech can also have a certain beauty to it if it's used for, for the right ways and the right reasons. And like we're doing right now, we're trying to do these live feeds even without Wi-Fi and it's still working. Isn't that amazing? So the phone lines are good enough right now and the video is going to be edited and the audio is going to go out and you guys can share it. And that's the idea that we're planting seeds wherever we go and we're causing a sprouting and a revival, um, unbelievable energy of back to basics. So now, now we've like had our intro, because this all just was an intro. What does it mean now practically? Let's just breathe a minute. A bit of mindfulness here. What does it mean to go back to basics? What does it mean? So what I would suggest, and I spoke about this with my soulmate today, is the power of simplifying everything. Just keeping things very, very basic and simple. Not making Judaism too complicated or making spirituality overly complicated or making the whole current crisis in the world with all these theories complicated or right now all the chaos in America complicated. Don't overcomplicate your life. Don't pay too much attention to the media. I'll give you an example. A good friend. I mean, I wish he was a good friend, but you know, I, I hold of him as a friend because we've had a lot of like time together <laughs> on the audios and things online. But on a real level, I met him only once when he came to Israel to do a volleyball con competition. He's not a Jewish guy, but once again, you know, we're Muna. It's all the, the whole world's got a Muna. We're into connecting to everyone on a universal level. So he, this guy called Lewis Howes, who I'm a fan of, let's say, he's a very positive guy. Not like overly complicated, not like genius, like Ben Shapiro or like one of these guys like Prego, all these like big minds. He's, he's a he is what he is, he's a simple dude, but, he's, but I love in a simplicity he's attracting a certain good energy from everybody. He can be with anyone and get a good vibe. And one of the things he spoke about, which I think is a great advice, I spoke about it once the other way around. When you wake up in the morning, and he also speaks about this and lots of other people, and the Shulchan Aruch speaks about it. The idea when you wake up in the morning, that you should just be able to thankful that you're alive, you're breathing. And not only that, thankful that Hashem believes in you. He, Rabbi Menasech, he believes in you with tremendous amunah. Hashem himself has tremendous amunah in you and me to, to come back to life in this world again another day. So that's the morning. So my Rebbe, the Tolna Rebbe, told me that I should thank Hashem for my soulmate. That would be the next thought, the next prayer. So I look to my, to my uh, actually to my right, and I say, thank you Hashem for my wife. And then, that's already started. And now I mentioned it a few classes back. I should thank Hashem for my children. And then should, you know, whoever doesn't have children, thank Hashem for my friends, for my network, for my sphere of influence, whatever it is. Thank you, Hashem, for a Muna class. Yeah, whatever. So you go through the day with a more gracious mindset. Now, what he said, Lewis House, was the next level. And I never thought about it because Chris Shamar, if you go into the sitter and look at the Arizo, and it's quite heavy, you know, like <laughs> you go into bed, you read the, the Garden of Amuna series. There's a book there called The New Light and the whole idea of sleep. And it's, it's quite a high level, what the whole approach of how you should look at sleep. And you look at Rav Orish's book there and it, it's, it's an intense understanding of what sleep really is. But just on a more simple level, because once again we want to go back to basics, before you go to bed, I was thinking, like, my wife and I, we're going to sort, do what Lewis has. It's a good idea. What did he say? He said you should spend, say, like 50 minutes or something before you go to sleep. No news, no negativity, no, like, movies, no nothing. Just 
you and your soulmate, or you and Hashem, if you're by yourself, or you and your uh, friend on the phone, whatever. You should go and you should spend the last few minutes before you fall asleep and enter the world of sleep, you should just spend that time to say thank you. For all the good things in the day that you had, you're healthy, thank God, you went through the coronavirus. My Rebbe said, in Shul this Shabbos, I told the Rebbe, he's my Rebbe, he said to me and to the whole group there, he said, we have to say Mizmola Soda, just like Rav Oresh always says. Rav Oresh and Rav Tolna Rebbe, exactly the same point. Mizmola Toda, to say Psalm 100, to say it over and over. Rav Oresh has been saying this for years and years and said to the Tolna Rebbe, he wants every child, every person to be able to say Mizmola Toda, to say the Psalm 100, to say it with thanks. And if you go into it, to learn it, to read it, to sing it, to dance it. And Rav Oresh has been doing this, thank God, for years. So obviously the Sadiqim there, all like tuned into that realm of gratitude but the idea is before you go to sleep to do it to, this is the concept of Lewis Howes a, a friendly guy from LA says that we should say before we go to sleep just sit with a person you love or as I said on the phone or with a person or a sham whoever however you have that last connected moment before you go to sleep and to say thank you you're healthy, we said. Not just healthy. you got amazing eyesight, or you got okay eyesight, but you can see the wonders around you. You can hear the wonders around you. You can touch, you can taste, you can, you know, there's so much to thank. Like, there's a whole beautiful sefer called Chovis Lavobis, Obligations of the Heart. And over there, if you've ever listened to a rabbi, a rabbi Vigdor Miller, he makes a very simple understanding of when you walk into a fruit shop, how you should view it. All the fruits that are around, all these wonderful fruits, not all these fake fruits that they make nowadays, but like real fruits, like a normal fruit shop that back in the day, or even nowadays, thank God in Israel, I think there's somewhat still real fruit, still ve real vegetables, all the colors and the life and the energy that's in the fruit and the the taste and you can just go through so many things again and again we just appreciate on a simple simple level how wonderful all these things are to just make our life more appreciative like we just had cheesecake on Shavuos and and all the other things grapes and we had um we had this iced coffee and uh, all these other nice things that we had and meat that we had after and the second suda to take that energy that we got that appreciation for life that there's so much wonderful tastes around us and not to god forbid to get like pulled down by you know by the fact that well you know like uh you know there's so much pain and there's so much you know yeah there is there is a lot of pain and right now there's a lot of you know anger and I just don't think it's worth giving any fuel to the fire out there. It's, it's, it's not going to help. You're not going to you're not going to solve it by fighting it out on Twitter or, or Facebook ch uh, comments or anything like that. It's not going to solve the fire that's out there. You've got to create a, an opposite light of love and and compassion that we talked about. That that's really our purpose in the world. That we can't overcomplicate our minds with all the different opinions and different ways of thinking. Keep it very simple, and that would be the same with everything we do in our Judaism. Yeah, there's so there's so much like things that we can just do. Like Rav Simaya once said. He said, Zilberberg, he's a very special rabbi I was connected to for many years, very holy person. He once said that the Shulchan Aruch, if you lay it out, what does it mean? A laid out table. That's the halakhic book for the Jewish people. It's a simple book. It's not complicated. If you lay out most of it, it's simple. Majority, majority is not arguments. It's not complicated backs and forth. Majority is just a simple way how to live your day. To connect in to the Torah, to understand every day there's a Kabbalah Satoya, there's a receiving of the Torah, to say Birka Satoya, to go through the prayer service, to understand you're going up in levels, purifying yourself. Not so complicated. You come down back into the world. You have to make a living so you gotta make a living honestly and there's a lot of guy a lot of laws laws how to make it honestly but bottom line you can if you don't know anything you can always ask a rabbi or you can look it up <coughs> there's so much opportunity to make things more simple like you're about to say something to someone and you know it's going to trigger them don't say it, it just otherwise you're going to spend hours like Gedalia Fenster we've just been putting thank God Gedalia Fenster's back on our channels we got him on the YouTube we got him on the audios you guys Gedalia Fenster keeps things very simple very simple sayings. I once spoke with him. We were in Miami walking around together on Shabbos and we were chatting and his simple sayings are jewels. Just having clear, simple, like, you know, we said the other day, to, to, to not sin is to win. You're like, just, just tune in, like whatever, like things that stick in your head that make you more inspired, that give you more of an energy, a, a feeling to your day, a feeling of love and appreciation. We're all, we're all like in this world together. So let's like tune into that simple joy, that simple 
fun of a child. You know, we've got people around us, they're, 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 they're trying to get our attention just for love and some positivity. Give it to them. A, draw, a child draws a picture. Be like, oh my God, there's so much joy in Simcha and, and in that simple picture. Or there's so many other things like a simple smile, a simple message you can give to another person. You can give some encouragement, some love. Let's turn around this, all this hate building up with some love and some appreciation like we, we posted the other day there's never enough to say thank you as a, uh, a video from Avorish that we, and there's never enough to say thank you. you can just constantly constantly say thank you Hashem thank you to the people around you I was today we we're going back and forth with Nissim Black thank you Nissim thank you Ellie like back and forth just be thankful <laughs> like we're all here to help each other we're not there's no like there's no we're not like gonna win by like being one up on someone like uh, being more getting more likes or more famous or anything like that it's not going to help nothing the only thing that's going to help us is if we have true to the true values that we have in the world and we spoke about this having that value system that win-win that constant awareness of reviewing your mission in the world what well, we spoke about Kabbalah Satori is a clarification of that and that's on like we said it's on a daily level it should come into your life on a daily level to remind you ground you what are your values yeah we all need to have some sort of salvation everyone right now needs it I need it I need salvations you want to help we've got plenty of ways you can help everyone out there can help spread the message more and also be part of the charity because obviously you know living in as well the big part of it it's always been that way for a reason as big as the high-tech industry gets here and blah blah there's always going to be people in that's all going to need charity because it's a merit for the world to support uh, to bring their money from outside Eretz Yisrael, bring it and put it into and invest and plant themselves through charity into Eretz as well. That's a tremendous merit. It's not that we're so desperate and needy. No, it's a merit for everyone else to have that opportunity to, to be part of this ultimate picture of what this holy land is about and what being part of the Jewish people is about. So how does this tie into Balascha? Balascha, this Pasha, is a very complicated, a lot going down, yeah? You start off with the Menorah, beautiful light, Aaron a Cohen, keeps things simple, does what Hashem wants. We also came Aaron, he did exactly what Hashem wants, kept simple, had the Levim, very busy with doing singing and doing their avoda of helping with the base of English. And then you have, as the Pasha goes on, Pesach Sheini, there's always a second chance. Okay, and it starts to get a little bit labelling now with these big nuns and the Nisyonis, the challenges, and then the people are complaining and the things going on and Vihim and there's a lot going on. It's like a new Pasha completely and then another Pasha after that and there's a lot of, lot of deep stuff going down and, you know, with the man and this and that and everyone's having a hard time with the meat and, you know, and trying to get to us as well and it's such a challenge and, you know, there's a lot going down and then we already, the coming weeks, we're going into in the Pasha's Shlach and it has, gets a little bit, you know, like we are going to have to like, you know, really work on our Muna on, on all these things. These are real challenges we have with how we make a living, how we make a living, how we, how we uh, also how we feel about it as well. To have a Muna that Hashem, will, there is Shefa here, that there's blessing. It's not just always a challenge and people talk that way, but it's, it's actually a land of blessing and goodness and, and it's more beautiful than any anywhere in the world in the true sense and then we have also there's an opportunity during these weeks to really work on our love for other people because we know that, that with the Lashon Hora at the end of the Pasha we know that with Miriam that that's something which is a big challenge for all of us if Miriam had a hard time one of the holiest women in history and Moshe Rabbeinu was talked about and Aaron Cohen also and it was a complicated scenario and that land so the big leaders spoke about the land in not such a great way and there's always these kind of challenges in this way so everyone in their level is having that challenge and God forbid on our videos or our, or our media we should speak not good about anybody or anything we should always keep it on a positive way positive direction and that is in itself just I'm having those simple values and mindset of positivity that back to basics way of being of just simple life not needing a swimming pool in your house not needing a fancy car not needing simple and physical levels not needing fancy clothes like you know i'd like to have a little bit it's all right just be happy you got i got glasses they work okay maybe one day i'll get new ones for the meanwhile Baruch Hashem, I'm, i can see so like you know like just just be happy with the simple things that we got 
And I wish everybody, you know, like as we're coming to an end, it's been a bit longer, the class, apologize. But I wish everyone by tuning in, like Rav Oresh is like, a, is a tremendous teacher on this level of being able to just teach simplicity and amuna. And all of you guys can tune into that. Thank God we've got lots of classes. We've got Rev Diane Elgrod continuing with the Halakhic class to be able to keep guiding us with simple laws and guidance. There are Diane Elgrod, Daily Halakhic Corner. All of you, please share those videos. We want to grow this network so it can really achieve to its fullest. Thank God we've got Rev Yonason Galed back with his Universal Muna series giving over Rav Oresh is simple, clear, and simple doesn't mean less. Simple is actually the highest. Simple is the, the deepest. If I would tell you, just we'll end off with this point, to be able to live that joyous life that we're all looking for, that fulfilled life. If you understand that all the Torah, with all its umkus and depth, and all its thousands of pages and learnings and rabbis and, and deep secrets and rabbitsons and holy teachings and stories and all the wonderful things that are within this deep world, it would come down to simple truths and you can just solidify and live a simple true life. That is the goal of it all. It's just to come out with that pure, simple explanation of clarity, of connection to godliness, to love God, to love to his Torah, to love people, the world, to love, to love mankind and humankind. Sorry, it'll be still got to be PC even now. So we're going to love everyone and bring out that goodness in the world. And the people, God forbid, who are playing around, please God, Hashem should, you know, protect us from them. And they, you know, hopefully they'll do tshuva. And if they've learned some Torah, the Torah itself, as we said at the beginning and near the middle of the class of Rabbi Nachman, the Torah itself, Mashiva's Nafish, will restore the soul. It will bring back everybody. And just by the fact that there's so much awareness now of Torah and spirituality, the whole world in itself is slowly now, the, the teachings of the Baal Shem Tov is, was Yotzai, is spread out everywhere, will come to everybody and there'll be a yichud, a unified, a simple oneness, a pshut echad, like oneness, a simple clarification of the whole world of how one we are and there's nothing to fight over, there's everything we need. We should be blessed of all these good things and I'm looking forward to another Muna class next week, next Monday, please God, 2 p.m. It's the time and uh, it's going to be the Amuna time class, that's it, no more Corona, Amuna time.